Hello, welcome to Truth Sentinel, watching over the truth in the news. Today's date is the 7th of July 2014. A warm welcome to everyone. Thanks for your support. Thanks for listening. Always appreciate it. Um, currently in London, uh, returned from the Ukraine. Uh, been back for a few days now. Just enjoying the, uh, the weather in London. It was actually sunny earlier today, but it's now raining. Um, today's news. David Cameron has pledged to get to the truth of historical child sex abuse claims uh, amongst politicians and, the, and even the cabinet of the UK um, Parliament. And there's supposed to be an announcement today of uh, an inquiry that's going to take place. And the Prime Minister Cameron said that there will be no stone unturned to find out about what happened. I suspect that there will be a few stones left unturned personally. Those stones have been left unturned for many years now. Uh, they've known about these um, child abuse allegations for many, many years. It's a big cover-up. Um, BBC's Nick Robinson said the inquiry uh, would look at claims covering the government, the NHS, which is the UK's health service, and the BBC. Uh, there's already been quite a number of uh, allegations and arrests at the BBC, including uh, Jimmy Savile and, uh, more recently, Rolf Harris. Um, Theresa May is expected to outline the plans, uh, plans today in the Commons. And the Home Secretary will also tell members of Parliament about a separate review of whether her department failed to act on claims of a paedophile ring in the 1980s. It, it seems like a lot of their past is catching up with them and they're desperately trying to um, cover up as much as possible ex-home secretary so he was actually a member of the cabinet Leon Britton welcomed the independent review into the missing, missing files I think when he uses that word welcomed I think that's in the same way that you'd welcome a say a, uh, a, a 20 meter long crocodile into your house um, he's not welcome at all because he's actually um, part going to be part of the allegations uh, there's those that allege that he's been um, actually caught on video in some um, child pornography movies alleged of course but um, I think he's not going to be welcome this at all when it was his responsibility to hand over the files they've gone missing hmm um, I've heard I've heard a lot of rumors anyway that he's involved in this and he will very quickly find himself accused of abuse um, so they're probably desperately now trying to find any more files that they can throw away as well there's, there's even been allegations against a former Prime Minister and possibly even members of the Royal Family. Wouldn't it be great if they finally found enough evidence to put some of these people away and so they can get the message that doesn't matter how um, important they perceive themselves to be, they're still not above the law. Uh, in Ukraine, Ukraine is to blockade two major cities which are still in rebel hands. It continues its operations against pro-Russian separatists. Ukrainian officials said they would now slay siege to the regional centres of Lugansk and Donetsk. Government forces regained control of the key rebel strongholds of Slovyansk and Kramatorsk on Saturday. Who knows what's going to happen in Ukraine. It was quite peaceful when I left, but that was uh, not the east. That was in Odessa, Ukraine, where there were problems a month previously, but everything's okay there now. I think it depends what, what, what Russia's going to do next. Heathrow Airport has told passengers to ensure all electronic devices carried as hand baggage are charged before travel if they're flying to the US. The UK government has also revised its rules to state that if a device doesn't switch on, you won't be allowed to bring it on the, to the aircraft. I wonder if this has anything to do with the NSA so they can gather your data from your switched on laptop but not from when it's switched off because we all know that they actually don't care about your safety, so this must be for some other ulterior motive. I would imagine this has got nothing to do with any particular terrorist threat, as is the case with all the confiscation of um, deodorants and liquids. Um, in my opinion, it's got nothing to do with security measures. There's some ulterior motive. Some say it's conditioning to get you used to being stopped and searched and uh, under a military kind of military police state who knows but I don't believe that they actually care about your safety uh, in the week's news there was a lot of um, 
a lot of news articles about the deaths of the Israeli teenagers and then the subsequent death of the and murder of the Palestinian boy reportedly beaten and then burned alive. Uh, the Palestinian Hamas movement has promised revenge after Israeli airstrikes in Gaza and um, Hamas said one strike near Rafah killed five of its fighters but the Israeli military said the men appeared to have died after handling explosives in a tunnel. Um, it's a constant battle of words and actual literal bombs as well um, and it's all in response to or well, the latest uh, tensions are in response to this um, the Israeli teenagers that were killed and then now this Palestinian uh, youth who was killed. Uh, on Sunday, Israeli police said they had arrested six Jewish suspects in connection with the death of, of that boy, Mohammed Abu Qadir, last week. I hope at least they, um, they are given proper justice for what they did. Last episode, we had the second part of our dus discussion with Douglas Dietrich about Satanism in the military. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, remember to keep uh, letting us know what topics you'd like to hear about. Today we're going to be talking to Lorian Fenton about super soldiers and mind control. I'll introduce Lorian later. Remember to check out our Facebook and Twitter page. If you do a search for Truth Sentinel or Scott Sentinel, you should find us. Uh, any emails you want to send for any reason at all, um, scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. That's scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. Thanks to anyone who posts this show on your channel. I really appreciate if you're doing that, like Ron Gibson, for example, who also puts up Alex Jones's um, videos. If you are able to sort of um, spread Truth Sentinel out on the internet, make sure as many people as possible can see it, I would appreciate that. Especially if you see one of those channels that uploads quite a few uh, videos like um, Conspiracy Vault, for example. If you request um, that they put up our videos, then they'll probably do so. Help me to help you have a good listening experience. And let's get some more listeners if we can. Um, topics coming up in future episodes could include world disasters, honor killings, mysterious celebrity deaths, planned obsolescence, patterns in world events, the Dyatlov Pass incident, religious cults, really anything that comes on our radar. Other shows I've been listening to, I've been mostly listening to Hagman and Hagman, uh, occasionally Alex Jones. I do find Alex Jones is c concentrating a bit too much on the immigration issue. I know it's a big issue, it's an issue in the US, in the UK, with the um, lack of control over immigration. No one's saying um, they don't want people of different cultures to come into countries. There's just some control issues regarding benefits, I think, is the main problem for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't think it's good for people to travel to another country purely for benefits. But I'm not against immigration. But I think Alex Jones is focusing a bit too much on it lately. You know, people want a bit of balance. Seems it's gone. But um, I'll, I'll still continue listening, I would just say. Just stop focusing so much on that one issue, it's getting a little bit boring, shall I say. So let's talk a bit about mind control anyway. Mind control, also known as brainwashing or coercive persuasion. Thought control or thought reform. Have you had your thoughts reformed today? Maybe if you've watched TV, you, you might have done. Um, it's a theoretical, although uh, in many cases literal in the past and probably uh, up until the present as well, indoctrination process, uh, which results in an inability to think independently. You could definitely say that about um, the vast majority of people in society uh, seem to have lost their ability to think independently or critically about what they see on TV. Um, mind control is also a disruption of beliefs and affiliations and uh, re-education of basic beliefs and values. So Project MK Ultra, sometimes referred to as the CIA's mind control program, is the name of the US government human research operation experimenting in the behavioral engineering of humans. A bit like the, um, the UK child abuse files. Most um, MK Ultra records were deliberately destroyed in 1973 uh, by order of the CIA director Richard Helms. So it's been um, quite difficult, if not impossible, for 
uh, investigate is really to get a complete understanding of what MK Ultra are up, were up to. And if you look at the stuff we know about them, um, it makes you wonder what they what they were doing that we didn't find out about because uh, they're sure to have um, destroyed the most um, the worst stuff first of all. So. Um, in 1945, the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency was established and given a direct responsibility for Operation Paperclip, uh, which is the program that recruited former Nazi scientists. They were perfect for this kind of work. Other projects included Project Chatter, Project Bluebird, and Project Artichoke. Okay, so they used things like LSD to experiment on people, sometimes with their knowledge, often without their knowledge. Uh, they also used other substances, um, substances which promoted illogical thinking and impulsiveness, um, substances which caused permanent brain damage and loss of memory. They were trying to um, experiment with uh, brain washing and um, uh, erasing people's minds. This was all, um, a lot of these people were people either taken straight off the streets or who were in institutions such as colleges, universities, hospitals. This, this also included children. Remember, all against the will. This was, um, this was found out. It would never have been discovered otherwise. This was found out using uh, whistleblowers and uh, investigative journalism when it existed in those days and um, caused President Clinton to have to apologize for this but it's still got ongoing. There's been people come forward who've said this is uh, this is continuing, and in some cases even worse than what they were doing before. So we're going to be talking to uh, Laurie and Fenton about this topic. So um, I mean, a lot of people find it kind of a um, uh, subject which um, they would just say is conspiracy theory that doesn't exist. Well, you know, it did exist. These these are things that were found out, were all admitted to, and apologised for. And um, there's people saying it still exists. So bear that in mind. I think when when we, uh, if you're a bit sceptical about this topic, do some research into CIA mind control programs, and and you'll find out what they did. I mean, most of what I've just told you is available on Wikipedia. We're also going to talk about super soldiers. I mean, when I think of super soldiers, I think of uh, Dolph Lundgren, the guy from uh, Universal Soldier. But I mean, a lot of this is is uh, also in the mind, you know, being strong in the mind or or controlling someone using their mind. I'm, I'd actually did this interview with Lorian in uh, in a hotel with paper thin walls. So uh, at one point towards the end, um, we have to stop because um, I'm keeping people awake. But today we're going to listen to part one of my chat with Lorian Fenton, who's an authority on this mind control and super soldier topic. Before we do, I just wanted to mention one um, one case in the UK, which people think may have been uh, two girls that escaped from some kind of uh, super soldier project, which was two Swedish girls called Ursula and Sabina Eriksson, who um, one day were acting very strangely on the motorway in the UK. They were um, trying to throw themselves in front of cars when they were questioned by the police as to what they were doing on the motorway. One got crushed by a lorry, had broken bones and everything, and um, the other one got hit by a car. This can all be seen on video, by the way, because they were videoing a uh, documentary at the time. You can actually see them getting hit by the cars and the lorries. Uh, the one that's just been hit by a car, although initially unconscious, the police um, check if she's okay, and then she gets up and starts fighting. It takes about six policemen to hold her down. So that's where the super strength um, subject sort of makes people think that maybe they escaped from um, a super soldier program and they were also saying strange things like you're not real you're not real and uh, the, the fact they were behaving very strangely by throwing themselves in front of cars and then later one of them went on to kill a man as well um, rather than going into the full story I'd recommend that you'd watch um, motorway madness if you type in motorway madness on uh, YouTube and type in Ursula and Sabina Eriksson or Swedish twin sisters and motorway madness that should come up with a documentary you can actually see uh, it's all um, filmed it's not reconstructed these are the actual videos apart from the murder I think which was obviously uh, reconstructed check that out see what you think anyway so uh, my next guest is Lorian Fenton who became actively involved in the San Francisco Bay Area UFO community after almost dying from a mysterious form of pneumonia during the H1N1 scare of summer 2009. That's something we actually have in common, because um, I think it was actually the same year as well. 
Um, I also got pneumonia Wednesday in Ukraine during the H1N1 virus scare there. And I, I had some mysterious form of pneumonia and was 10 days in hospital. So Lorian Fenton had a similar thing. It inspired her to do work uh, in the communities that she's now involved in. She's now section director in Petulama, California. On the first Saturday of every month at uh, the MUFON Marin Sonoma, which is www.mufonmarinsonoma.com. So um, Lauren's going to tell us about how she got into this. Um, her current work includes being a business manager, covering all aspects of web design and uh, marketing and PR, often related to UFO, paranormal, alien, mind control, super soldiers, black ops. She's going to tell us a bit more about the topic and then talk about um, how she sometimes works and meets with super soldiers at um, mind control and super soldier conventions. So let's go over to Lorian. Okay, hello Lorian. Hi there, how are you doing Scott? Very good today actually, yeah. Um, I think we were just having a quick chat before we started and um, you were saying you're a, you're a bit of a night person and so am I. So I, I'm just starting to come awake now and it's um, it's 11 o'clock over <laughs> here and um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to wake up. Um, but welcome to Truth Sentinel. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, it's really wonderful good, to be here. Really good of you to uh, take the time out and come and speak to us. Um, what kind of things are you going to be talking about today? Well, um, as we discussed earlier, I think it's time to, to start legitimizing my story about mind control and the super soldiers and the black ops people and the my labs and the aliens that are all part of this. Um, you know, a lot of people have been getting... <laughs> This is, it's a long story and we'll get into it, but I've been getting a lot of flack. I produce the Mind Control Summits and um, I'm involved with politics and I have my own radio show. And one of the things that I've noticed in the last year since being involved with all the whole mind control issue is that people uh, really don't understand it and they're very afraid of it. And and I try my best to bring conferences out there for people and, and so that they can hear the experts in the field. They can also um, see the people that are being targeted uh, through the targeting programs here in the United States and also in Europe, Japan, China. It's all over the world now. And I try to bring them all together so that people understand that this is a this is an issue it's not something these people are all making up and they're not all crazy and I do my best to make it very very um, you know I want to say almost academic in an educational style so people understand that you know these people are not nuts and it's just amazing to me how much flack I get for believing in it to this day, it's amazing. Even I, and I'm not going to say what, where, and when it's all coming from, but I get attacked constantly by uh, and even friends and people in the community in the UFO community don't even understand all this. So you know, it's very interesting to me. Oh, and another thing, Scott, uh, the conscious life community here in the United States is huge. I don't know if you know much about it. No, you know, well, what's there's that? What's, the, um, what's the conscious life community? Yeah, it's people like Stephen Greer, which I don't know if you've heard of. Yeah, yeah I've heard of like him. The, um, wasn't he um, part of the Disclosure Project? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Stephen Greer, I, you know, I'm not going to mention a whole lot of names, but David Wilcock and just a whole bunch of people that are what I would call uh, Foster Gamble, who did the Thrive movie. Movie. Um, all these people that are in this what this opening consciousness. Raise your. We're all going to ascend and. But aliens are going to be here to help us and you know this whole bit they don't even want to recognize that mind control is going on it's so bizarre to me I actually spoke at the New Living Expo here in um, San Mateo in the San Francisco Bay Area I was at five o'clock on Friday night which is the they call it the dead time because hardly anybody shows up for your presentation and it's when the the, the conference just starts to open and uh, there's hardly anybody there because the traffic is so bad getting there at five o'clock nobody can get there anyhow so but I was amazed I, I 
I did it basically so I'd have a recording of it. You know, I figured I'd be the only one in the room and, and give my presentation. But I had 25 people come out that had heard, had read in the program that I was talking about mind control, super soldiers, my labs, and uh, that type of, you know, the whole black area of consciousness that people just don't want to get to. And it was amazing to me what these people had to say. Afterwards, we all sat around and talked, and they were like, oh, my God, these things have been happening to me. Nobody believes me. And it, it's much worse. I mean, people are they're they're being abducted by aliens and it's becoming quite norm for that to, to happen ever since Whitley Strieber in the 70s it's become one of those things you can talk about there's experiencers groups all over the west coast there's therapists that do um, abduction therapy post-traumatic stress disorder uh, therapy for uh, alien abductees but there's nobody out there helping the people that are involved in the mind control issue and and I think it's because those people are all mind controlled as well. Okay. Okay. I so mean, can I just ask a question? Um, sure. What would you define as a as a super soldier? What would you be talking about when you be uh, using that term? Well, I believe that there are many different levels of super soldier, and that was coined back in the. <sighs> must have been the early 90s on the Art Bell show when um, Duncan O'Finian came on the show I think for the first time with Dave Corso and these guys were black ops uh, Navy SEALs it, back in the day and I would say in the you know late 60s 70s and into the 80s um, and they were used by the CIA and different you know alphabet agencies here in the United States and these guys were experimented upon and they were experimented upon with uh, metal uh, rods being put in place of bones uh, they were all chipped people think that these chips just came out a few you know five ten years ago wrong folks these chips where they keep track of you you can uh, tell your bodily uh, like your heartbeat your respiration rate and all that Total, and GPS, they had GPS way back then with satellites in the 70s, and people don't even realize that either. It was very crude compared to what we have now with our cell phones, but they had it. And um, anyhow, these guys were all experimented upon uh, when they went into the military. One of the things I was told years ago was that... Um, what they used to do in the 70s and into the 80s is they the, the guys would all be at boot camp and they would sit there uh, the first day of training and they would have some guy come in who is usually a psychologist come in and start droning on and on about what their training is going to be and it would be in a monotone voice and he go on and on and on and they make him sit there for eight hours and the guys who started falling asleep the, the at the very beginning you know that couldn't stand it and couldn't keep alert and couldn't stay awake they were easily hypnotized that was what they decided with these guys and they were the guys that were pulled out of these uh, classrooms and pulled into these special law programs so, the, so they very took, took advantage of them while they were sort of uh, in the sort of sleepy. They were vulnerable, sleepy. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's horrible. I hope they never do that to me because I'm I'm useless when I'm tired. You know, if I don't get my, <laughs> if I don't get my eight hours sleep every night, then uh, I, I can become quite yeah. zombie like. You know. Well, I think it was more like when the guy's droning on and on, and it, basically they were hypnotizing them, and they just wanted to see who would nod out the fastest. So, and those guys were considered very pliable, you know, very usable, and they would start training them, and you know, they go through rigorous training without even knowing they're going through it to see if they can be used in these programs. Okay, so I heard this. Okay, but going back to what a super soldier is, um, the definition for me is that it has many levels. So many levels and the Duncan O'Finian era what I called the Omega guys the original Omega teams uh, were, were actual soldiers and I think that's where the the coining came super soldier and also they were doing a lot of things like they did with the six million dollar man on TV that people just you know they thought it was all fantasy well they were trying to do that with these guys and uh, this is back in the end of the Vietnam era and um, they were also at the time probably trying breeding programs um, to just like you know I tell people this and they think I'm absolutely out of my mind did you ever see the movie the boys from Brazil 
Um, no, I don't think so. I've, I've oh, if you haven't, but, um, yeah, no, if you so. haven't seen it, Scott, you've got to see it. I think that movie scared me more than anything I've I've ever seen. What's that? It about? was about yeah, it was about uh, Mengele living in Brazil, cloning uh, Hitler. And, uh, you know, I had all these volunteer German women to have the baby, and they put them in a situation in a home where it was the same type of thing, where the mother was uh, domineering, the father was docile, uh, and they went all throughout the world finding homes where they could have this child raised to become a psych psychopath. Mm. Well, that sounds like a good film anyway, yeah. It was it was absolutely fantastic, and um, but I think that is much more closer to what was really going on in the seventies and eighties as far as not necessarily cloning, but using different people from different bloodlines to create very psychic people. And I believe the psychic element is a huge part of the super, you want to call it super soldier program, I call it super consciousness program, mm -hmm. okay, because this is another whole type. You have the physical guys that are doing the shooting and the killing, then you've got the people that are like in the movie uh, Minority Report, where they're connecting with these guys psychically and helping them in the field or fighting whatever it is they're fighting. And we got to remember something else. There's the whole play of maybe a secret space program going on at the time and maybe using these super soldiers to deal with the alien threats that may be coming to this planet that we've never known about um, like who do you deploy when a giant spider ends up here that's going to eat us all not me that's you for know? sure because I'm petrified of spiders <laughs> I, I'm using far out examples, and it's probably a lot less in in how it actually is going about. But I want people to understand there is some type of secret space program. There has been for a very, very long time, at least here in the United States. When you look up in the sky and you see spacecraft, if you're contacting and you're seeing spacecraft, I can almost guarantee... 60 to 75 percent of those craft are ours. I don't think there's as much alien presence here as people want to believe. I really believe it's our stuff. And I believe we've been going into outer space or, you know, at least our galaxy for quite some time now with the help of some other form of, of, of life. Now, I don't know if we're actually transversing time and space like Star Trek. I don't know if we're going through wormholes. I don't know if they have some type of propulsion that makes it so we can just travel around our planets and our sun and what have you um, without radiation death, which is huge. But anyhow, I mean, if you get scientific about it, there's so many obstacles. But um, I just, I really need people to understand that this all could be very true. It also, and here's the kicker on this, Scott, this is what really blows people away and they have a very, very hard time understanding it, is that it may be that it's all in an AI consciousness, just like the matrix and all of it is taking place in a holographic universe within all of our minds connected like a hive mind you mean like um, we're living in some kind of like a simulated universe well we are our 3d reality that we look out and see is the is the the simulated universe and all the mind control stuff with the secret space programs, the super soldiers and all that may be what I call an interdimensional existence that we have. Like, okay, I'm going to give a great example for this. There's a guy, his name is, oh, Rich Rogers. He wrote a book. He was at my first uh, super soldier conference. And the book is about how when he goes to sleep at night, he's taking to another reality he is trained there to work against, with, and for whatever uh, command is using him in a super soldier or super light warrior program, okay? They have fought battles on different planets. They have fought, fought them in different um, uh, universes, this type of thing. Now, he thought he was just having vivid dreams that were just out of this world, okay? Until his son 
would sit there with him at breakfast. He was about 12 or 13, and he'd say, Man, I had the strangest dream last night, Dad. I was doing blah, blah, blah. And he just about fell off his chair the very first time he heard it because in his reality, in his dream, in his dimension, wherever he was at, his son was there doing exactly what he was telling him at the breakfast table. Oh, that, would freak, so, that would freak me out for sure. Yes. So at that point, his paradigm, his whole reality changes because then he realizes there's somebody using me in some holographic way or dimensional way or something in a different dimension. And I just was like, when I heard this, I was blown away. Now, having heard that from Rich Rogers way back in the beginning of me doing my research on all this, I ran across a guy named uh, Bernie Mendez. And he told me, and he said, oh, now, here, here's another kicker. Oh, my God. Okay, first I want to explain something to everybody. I see this as a giant spider web. And I see in the middle the answers to the universe, and it may be the number 42. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but every strand of the web, every connection to the major strands in the web is an experience had by any of these people and I give each strand a different name. One is time travel, one is dimensional travel, one is a super soldier program and how they physically work with them, another one is secret space program, another one is alien contact, another one, you know, I go right down the list. I don't think they're all separate issues. I think they're all one issue that we have yet to put together in the center and find out the key. Okay? Uh -huh. I think they're all the answer to consciousness and how we function here on in this matrix level. And I have a good friend named Andrew Bish Bishagio. I don't know if your listeners have heard of him, but he's the guy that swears he time traveled and that he was part of a project called Project Pegasus back in the 70s and 80s. And um, his stories have never deviated. He's never changed anything. He's a brilliant man. He's an attorney. Um, but, you know, I believe that maybe they were putting him into a, a, an induced type of mind control to make him think that that's where he went and what have you. But what's interesting is that he has also said the same things that Rich Rogers has said, that he felt like he was falling asleep or going through this elevator process into uh, onto planet Mars okay so who knows that this isn't all the same type of thing going on and that we're all just perceiving it in different levels and uh, anyhow I, I astray here as they say but um, anyhow so we we're talking about super soldiers and it, it's a much more complex problem, and I now put it all under what I call the mind control conundrum, because it really is that. And there's two other pieces to this. We have the black ops people that are doing the mind control, and we have how they do it. And that is extremely important for people to understand that it has become so technological uh, to the point where they used to chip people and put you know super strong bones in them and what have you. Now they just uh, they do some kind of induction where they hypnotize them, they use drugs on them, um, and this is in the 90s and the early 2000s, okay? Now they don't even need to do that. Now they just zap with a cell phone, give you a signal in your ear, maybe a high-pitched squeal that you don't know what it is, and that will have you doing something for them for two weeks, an hour, 15 minutes, whatever, and you won't even remember it. Scary. How's that for sophisticated? Yeah, yeah. And and People, we and we do know that the government has admitted they've done um, experiments in the past using mind control. I mean that was it. Oh, sure. Project uh, MK Ultra in the fifties and sixties. I mean they did actually apologise that. I was talking to Douglas uh, Douglas Dietrich about that. I mean Bill Clinton actually apologised for what they did because they did some disgusting things. Uh, during that oh moment. yes i mean testing people with radioactive substances using lsd this was all against without them knowing you know tra traumatizing them torturing them brain trying to brain damage them i mean i mean people are, i think people just forget about that it's you know it happened in the past and people have forgotten but this was actually condoned by the government wasn't it 
Oh yes, absolutely. And if you think that that is that that that's what we know about, that's what Bill Clinton knows about. Do you know how deep that rabbit hole goes? I mean, that's just the surface. People uh, have and, no uh, we don't idea. know. We don't know if it's still continuing. I mean, I, I would it imagine is it, it is. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. If they tell it, well, back in the in the day, they said it was stopped. It never stopped. It just got more clandestine and more clandestine, and it just never stopped. And it, you know, Scott, the part about this whole thing that really, really bothers me is that people are so mind controlled to this day that you know I feel like. A mission in life. Ever since I had my what I call awakening to this, I have been ridiculed. I've been, uh, I made fun of. I have had no help in putting on my conferences. I put on another conference here in the Bay Area called UFO Con. It's all about aliens, and it's actually kind of fun to do. And I always get people say, "Oh yeah, here, you know, I'll be a partner. I'll help you with that, you know." And everybody has a good time and talk about aliens and abduction and UFOs and all that and it's become so mainstream that it's not easy and nobody ridicules for ridicules me for putting it on and it's easy getting funding I put on the mind control summits and my god it's like pulling teeth and and then um, I get kicked out of the places I've, I've rented um, my website's hacked for six months no one can buy a ticket I mean it is just phenomenal the the type of um, clandestine undercover uh, people after me for putting on this event. Now I put on three of them and I don't know if I'm going to be able to put on another because they've gotten to the point now where I can't even rent a space to put it on because every time I try to uh, I get a phone call back saying oh, I'm sorry we don't have any space for you or we don't you know or they just never call me back. Whereas if I'm putting on anything else, people call me back in you know thirty seconds because they want the money, right? And uh, what what do um, what usually goes on at a mind control summit? Is it um, well, a number of people speaking? Oh my gosh! Oh Scott, I wish you could have been at the last one. I think my last one was truly the best one I've ever done. Um, I had uh, eight speakers and I have two nights of experience. Experiencers. That's what I call them. Friday night is for the people that think they're in the uh, what I call super soldier my labs category. And then on Saturday night, we start on Friday night at 6 o'clock. We do super soldiers my labs and all that type of content consciousness uh, secret space program pilots and you know whoever thinks they're whatever they are on Friday night and um, they talk about it and they explain to people what's happened to them and and how it how it affects their lives and and what's going on with them it's fascinating fascinating stuff and then on Saturday during the day we have uh, four or five expert speakers maybe six I can't remember at this point I should probably bring up the website huh and then um, Saturday night we have what we call the targeted individuals and these are the people that are being electronically harassed and I found local people in Las Vegas to come in and talk about their electronic harassment and what they've done to them and man a oh man oh man unbelievable stuff I mean this is the nuts and bolts physical stuff this is where they're zapping you with electronics this is where they're gang stalking you this is where they're trying to push you to your limits to see what you'll do as a matter of fact um, Aaron Alexis, the Naval Yard shooter, was in contact with some of the people um, that I had speaking at my summit as experts. Um, and he was talking about the electromagnetic frequency that they were pulsating on him all the time so he could never sleep and they were telling him to kill people and this all involves voice to skull communication technology where they're talking to these people 24-7 in their head with no uh, no relief in sight and they um, say I must admit like um, I've often wondered like um, when you get um, sort of people who um, a lot of people label as nutcases who end up killing someone and they always they always do actually say they refer to the voices in their head that, that told them to do it I've heard of numerous cases where uh, they've they've mentioned voice in their head and I've, I've often wondered why don't they investigate about these voices you know what what's causing them well, that's because the medical community has labeled them all schizophrenic, which I find absolutely fascinating. That and, and, and believe me, there's a lot. The first thing I talk to people about when they come to me and they say, "Oh, I'm being mind controlled. I'm a super soldier. I'm this. I'm that." I say, "Hey, 
Are you on any antidepressant drugs? And have you ever been diagnosed as a schizophrenic? That's the first thing I ask them. And if they tell me they've never been to a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist uh, to be diagnosed for anything, I say, I can't talk to you until you go to one. Because I want to make sure that you are actually not having any physical, chemical problems in your life. If this is truly happening to you, we have to rule all that out. How would you tell the difference between um, someone who was... Uh did have some kind well, of I I have talked to quite a few that um, have been diagnosed with schizophrenia that I actually believe are being are being targeted and um, so it, it in answer to your question it's really hard to tell because in some cases they use people who do have psychological problems in the project just because they use them I think as a as, as a baseline you know, this person is nuts. Let's see how much further we can push them. And so that person, I think, is their baseline. And then they go on and they use people that aren't. And how can I tell the difference? It's very difficult to tell the difference. There are two or three questions I have that I've learned from psychologists and from people in the projects to ask. And I can't really tell you what they are because if I do, then everybody will figure out what it is and then I won't be able to use that anymore as a gauge. But they're very, um, uh, uh, they're very soul searching questions that uh, the, the answer is always the same if they are being affected. And I can tell you that and, and it's real easy to tell from that question forward whether they're nuts or not. <laughs> And when I say nuts, I say that lovingly, folks, because I think we're all affected a little bit. You know, we're all just a little bit crazy. I don't think anybody can be here in this day and age with the technology and the, the interference we have from electronic communication and the, um, the harassment that they're doing to us just by living on a day-to-day -day basis. The television, the cell phone, and the satellites out there right now are all very much a part of all this. So, you know, there isn't anybody unless they live on a farm in the middle of, you know, the Arctic somewhere that's, <laughs> that's not being affected at this point. We are being so. bombarded with all kinds of different waves, you know, like with uh, Wi-Fi signals and radio signals. Exactly, exactly. You know, I was just talking to a good friend last night, and he said to me, he goes, Lorraine, there isn't anybody affected by this. He goes, um, I just, you know, he do, he doesn't understand why I'm out there preaching this. I feel like, you know, I'm the preacher on the soapbox sitting there in the middle of the street screaming, and no one's listening to me because, um, you know, he says, you know, no one cares. And I said, boy, isn't that the truth? They really don't care. And this is a major, major issue. See, that's how insidious this mind control has become. We've all become mind controlled to the point where they have got us so that we don't pay any attention to the fact that they're mind controlling us. It's just, it's absolutely amazing to me that people aren't aware of what's going on to them. They don't, they don't acknowledge what is happening to them. You know, it's very interesting to me that we have bred that out of the human being. I think we are at that stage of transhumanism. I think we're at the stage where we're turning into mind-controlled robots. And uh, who's, anyhow. Um, who, who's actually targeting these people? I mean, is it secret government agencies? Who are Who's behind it all, do you think? Well, that's a good question. And the reason I'm pausing to think about it is because right off the bat, I came up with three or four different groups already. Um, we have the black ops people in the CIA and the FBI who do the low-level type of control with scopolamine and, and um, what's you know, what's different... scopolamine? Scopolamine is a type of drug that will... It's also called the date rape drug. What it does is it makes you compliant. You will do anything anybody tells you, and then when it wears off, you won't remember anything that you did. That sounds like alcohol. <laughs> well, it's it's a much stronger, more potent version of it, and they've been using it all over the world to steal from tourists. Isn't that interesting? They slip it in their drinks, then they tell the tourists to go to their ATMs, pull out all their money, give it to them, and then the guys wake up the next day and they have nothing. Now, now you are scaring me because I'm currently a tourist in uh, in Ukraine. So. <laughs> 
I'm going to be careful uh, well, who I drink you got to be very sophisticated to get your hands on that stuff. But, um, but see, the, the, that's the level that the CIA or the FBI or the NSA or the black ops people would be doing something. Then there's the level deeper than that where they're using Navy SEALs or very deep black ops um, military to sit in front of electronic, um, you know, boards or computers and do the voice-to-skull communication where they're constantly in rotation 24-7 around the clock through different guys uh, beaming some type of electronic signal into some person's head. Is there any... um? Is there any actual evidence of that? I mean, or, or is it just um, a witness well, account? I mean, is there any way to prove that? You know, there isn't. In a, and not yet, because no one has broken into these facilities to find these guys yet actually doing it. But I think they're becoming very close. And they are listening to us right now. If you don't believe that, then we're in big trouble. But they are listening to us right now. And I believe that they're laughing because they think that they'll never get caught. But I'm hoping that one of these days, one of them will slip up enough that when he's talking to these guys in their head, they'll somehow give away their location. And that we are able at that point to, through groups like Freedom from Covert, um, ele um, covert Harassment, Electronic Harassment Surveillance, we'll be able to gather enough people together to kind of bring, you know, storm the, the building or wherever they're at and prove to the United States people and the people of the world that these guys are actually in operations doing this. My is that they're doing it on a military base and it'll be very hard to get in there and do that kind of thing. But if they're subcontractors out um, just in a building, in an office building somewhere, um, hopefully we'll be able to catch them at some point. There are many people out there right now that are saying that the guys talking to them in their head are becoming more and more um, familiar with them while they're talking to them, the longer they try to control them. So we're hoping that they start slipping up. A couple of them have m mentioned that these guys have told them they are Navy SEALs, they are an un unnumbered team of SEALs. They are hired just for their computer skills and their black ops uh, training, and they train them in black ops, and then they, but they're Navy SEALs as well, so they can defend themselves or take care of themselves or go out on a mission if they have to. Why, why would so, they be doing it? Are they doing it to, um, as a kind of form of torture, or is it an experiment? Why, why are they actually I, doing it? I believe it is a giant experimentation. And you know where it all stems from? This is very interesting. This is just my take on where it all stems from. I think it all stems from the first alien encounter that we had back in, God knows what, 30s, 40s, 50s, or whenever, where the aliens actually um, were tel doing telepathy with us and communicating us communicating with us with our minds and at that point in time there are many scientists that have retired now that were working on these UFO projects way back in the day that have come out and said look the biggest threat to mankind is the fact that um, we can't communicate with these guys on their level so I believe the MK Ultra program was not out of the Cold War theory that everybody has that they say, oh yeah, the Cold War happened, we had to, you know, they were doing psychic uh, experiments and so we had to keep up with them. Uh -uh. I think the whole thing was because we realized that there's no way that we we have to start developing people that have much more brain power and able to handle this kind of thing, this um, telepathy, this constant bombardment in their brain and the control that the aliens have over us. Not, I'm not saying all aliens do, and I'm not even saying there's you know many of them or one of them or any of them, but something happened back in the 40s or 50s where they realized we're not even going to be able to battle these guys if uh, we can't at least do some type of telepathy. And I think that all of these programs started because of that. Now, they may have branched off into different reasons and why and how and what they're doing now, but isn't voice-to-skill communication basically somebody being beamed into your head and talking to you by telepathy? Maybe and, and that's... There, I think, I believe there is, um, there is known technology, I believe, that um, where you can actually send sound waves into someone's head. I think you can actually, people can actually exactly. research that on the, on the internet. It does exist. 
It does. Patrick Flanagan is the the person who invented all this voice skull communication back in the oh I want to say seventies, and uh, his was wi- widely known. But that doesn't mean there weren't other scientists at the time that had been doing it earlier on than him and uh, for different applications. But yeah, I you know absolutely. They've been doing this type of thing where we're sending signals and receiving signals. Now, like I said, it's been 50 years since they've been doing all this. Their programs may have changed. They may be doing different studies now. They may be seeing how far they can push people before they'll kill somebody for them. They might be seeing how far they can push them to make them all like uh, the the project that they did in um, during the Gulf War where they blasted all these guys with electronic frequencies and they all were so fearful that they all got on their knees and said, we'll give up and do anything you want and, and we're very compliant. That's a type of mind control, totally. It's completely, you know. It is, it is weird. I mean, I know, I know a lot of people listen to this kind of stuff about mind control and uh, and they just think um, the government wouldn't do that. But I, I just, I always do think it's really strange when, when the, the government have admitted they've done this in the past. You know, so. Oh it's, yeah. It's it's not science fiction. They they've done it. You know, it's, there's a good chance they're still doing it. You know. Oh, very very good chance. I mean, to me, it's a hundred percent. I know they're doing it. And uh, what's and I I really encourage people to read things like uh, VeteransToday.com. There's quite a few, not all the time, but quite a few uh, articles about um, the aliens. If you want to believe in aliens or fallen angels or whatever you want to believe in, and um, consciousness and mind control. The three very important issues that aren't addressed all the time by the by any mainstream media that I know of, uh, besides Coast to Coast AM and a few of the alternative networks, um, like myself on Revolution Radio and you hear Scott on the Sentinel Report. Is it the Sentinel Report? No, it's Truth Sentinel. Truth Sentinel. I'm mm-hmm. so that's sorry. Okay. That that's much more important. But I, 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 suppose, my... I suppose each episode is kind of like a Sentinel Report, so you're not far. You're not far <laughs> off. <laughs> so, anyhow, I just, you know, I don't even know where to start with all this because it is truly a giant spider web and I'm just grasping many pieces to it. Um, and I suppose maybe it's a good time to go into how I all, I became awakened to all this. Yeah, yeah, please do. I, I'd love to. And it's a little bit of a long story, folks, so hang in there with me. I'll try to make it as fast as possible, but... In uh, 2011, it was September 22nd and 23rd, I even know the dates, because I went off to a conference in Los Angeles called the Awaken Aware Conference put on by Kerry Cassidy of Project Camelot and Bill Ryan. He was still uh, around and, and very much active with Project Camelot at the time. And I and I have to preface this with six months before that, I... Um, had been coming out of uh, almost dying the year before and I'd lost all my clients I lost you know everything and um, I was starting to realize that I needed to do something that I loved instead of stuff that was corporate for a living so I decided I was going to I have been producing conferences and seminars and um, art and music festivals and things for 25 years now so I said okay what do I love doing I'm not going to put on any more corporate events I want to find something fun something that I like and that's where the whole UFO thing came into play and uh, I decided to do that and I became a MUFON uh, state section director I don't know if anybody knows what MUFON is but it's the mutual UFO network it's one of the oldest oldest organizations in the world. They're an international organization and you guys can find out about them at MUFON.com. That's M-U-F-O-N.com and they're a wonderful organization in the fact that they're all volunteers. They're all kind of looking up in the skies at night looking for UFOs and uh, we have monthly meetings and I thought, oh, it would be great. I'll I'll run a monthly meeting and uh, start talking about this whole phenomena. So this is kind of where my life was heading and at that time I was listening to Carrie Cassidy's Project Camelot this is in May before the September trip and she had a woman on her radio show called Asolaria Liberalis wow that's quite a name 
I know, I know. And she was, to me, she was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. She said some really amazing things about consciousness and about ascension and DNA and, you know, things like that. And I thought, you know, this is very intriguing. I want to know more. But she said one thing that really tweaked my brain. She said, if there are aliens out there, and she really believes there are, what, I, what she believes they had done is they had taken our DNA and they had put locks on it. And what you meant by locks wasn't necessarily, like, you know, putting the lock on it, but a, a definite um, biological lock so that we could not ascend to any other different type of being. And I thought that was fascinating. So at one point I said, you know, I'd love to represent her. And I also represent people in the UFO, Bigfoot, um, you know, uh, whatever community as a manager. And I've been doing that for different speakers who've written bestsellers. So I thought, you know, I'll just take it from the bestseller list over to the, the you know, the really esoteric people and I'll start managing them uh, for radio and TV and, and book deals and tours and that type of thing so and at one point I actually uh, did a small tour for uh, Michael Tellinger over here on the west coast in the United States anyhow bottom line I was starting to pick up clients I thought wow she'd be a great person to have as a client so I gave her a call and as I'm talking to her the second or third time I think it was June a helicopter uh, well let me preface this I'm talking to her, and as I'm talking to her, I made a very spiritual, core, mental decision that this is the type of thing I was going to do. I was going to start helping the world. I was going to start taking care of the world more than taking care of myself. And I don't know, it was a very core, conscious, spiritual decision, and I can't explain it to people, but I actually felt a spiritual shift within myself while she's talking to me. It was very, it's kind of like she was healing me in one way, but also at the same time I was i was changing my life too. It was a huge moment for me in a very subtle way. And the second I did that, the second I felt that shift that I knew my direction, I was very powerful in that moment, this helicopter appears over my house. And it didn't come there. I didn't hear it showing up. Nothing. It's just there. And it's really low. And it's circling. And it's really loud. And she can hear it. And she goes, oh, what's that? And I said, oh, it's a helicopter. It just got here. And then I realized I never heard it get there. And then I sent my roommate out to look at it. And he goes, yeah, it's a black helicopter. Um, there's two guys in it. One guy's sitting by the door looking down on us. And they're circling nose down. And I said, well, how far off are they? And he said, about, oh, God, not more than a couple hundred feet. And I said, oh, my God. And then suddenly, as we're talking about it, they take off. And we could hear them leaving. Okay. So now I'm prefacing all this because it, it plays a huge part in what happens in September. Um, so in September, I call a Solaria in August. I say, hey, you want to come down to this conference? And she says, sure. So she meets me in L.A. And we go to the conference together. Um, it's Friday night. And it is, oh, you guys, I've got a kitty cat that needs to be let out. Hold on just a second. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> there you go, sweetie. Go, go, go. Okay, sorry. That's all right. Oh, we always welcome cats on the program as well. Oh, great. Well, she just went outside, so um, I, she's done with us for now. You know how they are. They're aloof. Anyhow, so I'm down at this conference. It's Friday night, and Duncan O'Finian and Miranda, his girlfriend, uh, or Axe as her nickname is, or on stage, and it's the first time she's ever spoken on stage to anybody. The room is packed. I'm sitting there with A. Solari. We're listening to her speak. And she said something, and I about fell off my chair. I'm sitting there, and I hear her say, yes, and I hear this screaming in the back of my head all the time. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm looking around the room, and I'm looking around the room. Nobody else is looking around the room. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, what's going on here? This is so weird. Because... I had had this, and it wasn't all the time, I had heard a woman's voice screaming at the top of her lungs as I was falling asleep and waking up, and it wasn't all the time, and it happened much more in my 20s than it did in my, you know, late 40s or early 50s, and it was, I couldn't meditate. Back in my 20s, I started, I was trying to meditate, and I'd get to this place where I'd start hearing the screaming, and I'd have to stop, and I just stopped meditating, because I thought, you know what, I don't want to go there, and I just 
you know, I blocked it out of my head as something that was happening to me. And then every once in a while as I was waking up, I'd hear it and I'd be falling asleep. I'd hear it and I just, you know, I just never really paid much attention to it. I had talked to it. Now, I was in therapy a lot in my 20s and early 30s, a lot, because I had a very interesting upbringing and I wanted to, not because it was traumatic or anything, but I wanted to get to the bottom of why my parents were the way they were. (laughs) Turns out, you know, we can run, but we cannot hide. I think I went from turning into my mother into my father now, so it's always interesting how that personality plays out, but I'm in therapy in my 20s, and I told the therapist about hearing this screaming when I was meditating. She said, oh, well, have you ever had anything traumatic happen to you as a child? And I said, yeah, when I was 18 months old, I ate rat poisoning and almost died. And um, she goes, oh, it's probably you screaming when you were a kid because they, they tied you down in the bed when you were a kid and, you know, whatever. And I said, oh, okay. So I just let it go. I never really thought about it. I thought it was post-traumatic stress from something happening to me. So anyhow, I'm sitting there in, Anna, uh, in the Orange County in Irvine listening to Miranda say this. And I thought, oh, my God, okay. Well, that's weird, weird, weird that she says that. And, and my brain just lit up and I'm going... Oh my God, I wonder if I'm involved in any of this. It was just a very scary, weird moment for me. And um, so when the speech was over, Ace Laria says, I want to go talk to them. They have an answer for something. I got to talk to them. And at this point, I'm pretty freaked out. Now, I'm, going to, I'm also going to add in one other preface to all this. As I was driving down to the OC for the conference, I am a conference producer as well. So I kept thinking, I, I saw that Duncan was speaking, and I thought to myself, I wonder why no one's ever put on a conference for these guys, you know, idiot me. Uh, it'd be very interesting to do that. I think I'll talk to them about it when I'm down there. You know, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking business. I'm, you know, driving, and this is the kind of inner dialogue I'm having. Maybe I should have a conference for them, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, stupid me, I'm, I'm down there and I'm still thinking about maybe doing this conference, but now my mind's blown away and I'm not sure what I'm doing there. And <laughs> I realize my whole life is going to change this weekend. I had this horrible feeling that I was going to be in big trouble. Anyhow, as soon as she said the screaming in your head, I was, I knew something was afoot. So, so I'm trying to avoid them like the plague. Asolaria is trying to talk to them. And we have a table out in the lobby. And I, and I said, let's just go back out to our table Friday night. And then I said, oh, let's just go back to the house. So she says, okay, I really want to talk to them. And I said, okay, we'll talk to them tomorrow. Okay. So we go back to the house Friday. Nothing happens. We come back Saturday. And nothing eventful happened Saturday. I did speak to a couple of people. I spoke to Aaron McCullen. He was also there. And I asked him if he would be interested if we did some kind of super soldier conference, if he would be interested in speaking, he said he would, everything was fine. I thought, oh, okay, I got one, yes, let's see what happens. And I, I must be stupid or brave, I don't know what it is, but I kept pursuing this conference. I don't know why I kept doing it. But anyhow, um, that night, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to talk to Duncan or Miranda yet. And I keep telling Ace Laria, yeah, let's just go. Let's just get out of here. And she goes, no, I really want to talk to them. And I said, well, we'll talk to them tomorrow. I promise you we'll talk to them tomorrow. It's the last day of the conference. So after leaving, we come around the side of the building. And I'm trying to get out through, like, the garbage area out by the pool. And so no one can see us, right? So I think I'm being really sneaky. And I come around and we hit the tr- cans and guess who's standing by him but Duncan and Miranda so uh, at that point my life is going to change a little more so Ace Laurie immediately runs over to Duncan and she's talking to him and I start talking to Miranda and I said to her I said oh yeah I'm thinking about putting on a conference would you guys be interested and we're talking and talking I finally said to her I said hey uh, what's you know what's that whole thing the in your head she goes oh she goes that that's just the horrible horrible thing you know that's happened blah blah and I said well I think I have it too and she looked at me and this is probably Scott the best advice out of all the things that have happened to me in my life of anything that's ever happened to me she gave me the best advice and I want to thank her to this day every time I talk about it I thank her um, she said Lorian Maybe you don't want to know about it. And I'll explain that to you folks later, why that was so profound. Thanks again to Lorian, and apologies um, for the abrupt ending, which you'll hear in next episode, part two. Um, Someone was banging hard on the door, so I had to go and answer it, because um, 
it was late at night and people were trying to sleep. Um, Lorian asked me to mention that um, if you want to watch the Super Soldiers and Mind Control Summit, go to the mindcontrolsummit.com and click on the On Demand tab and you can have $10 off by using the code JOHN23 that's a capital J and the rest is lowercase than 23 so that's mindcontrolsummit.com I'll check, I'll double check the address but it should be mindcontrolsummit.com um, I'll check it again and repeat this in the next episode part 2 okay so let's just round off today's episode um by the way i found Lorian really easy to talk to and it's um it's within all our interests i think to keep an open mind to the mind control topic and to be aware of it in all its forms i mean it's probably going on these days and it's happening around us we're we're probably to some extent um unaware of it and to some extent we're all probably being mind controlled as well to a certain extent uh you think um you think they did, they did those experiments in the 50s and 60s and 70s for no reason? Uh, they did them for a reason, and um, I'm sure um, they've worked out how to control people's minds uh, as, as a population as well as individuals. I think they wanted to needed to know what how populations and individuals would react in certain situations, uh, so that when those situations occur, they'll know what to expect. Um, I guarantee, I mean, a government official will either be apologising for new experiments that have been discovered in 20 years from now, or perhaps they won't ever be discovered, but I'm, I'm sure they're happening. As Laurie-Anne said, the, the stuff we know about was just because it seeped out into the open. Um, I think there's, there's lots of other stuff that would have, uh, would have terrified us if we knew about it, so perhaps it's better we don't. Remember, as always, blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Thanks, Einstein, again for that. Uh, that, that message will be on the back of Truth Sentinel t-shirts, um, which will have the Truth Sentinel logo, plus um, some uh, political slogans on the back, which we're going to do in a couple of colours. Let me know if you're interested in one. Um, I'm not going to even try and sell them. I'm just interested in how many people might be interested in, in one of those. We might even be able to do some tailor-made ones with, uh, sorry, uh, bespoke kind of uh, messages on the back. Uh, remember, we're all about spreading tolerance on here, looking for peaceful yet revolutionary change to make a better society. And uh, at the moment, we think that could be done if uh, if enough people spread the word and started to question the, the truth and have a lot less respect for the people in charge, which some people just give them too much respect. Um, Remember to email us scottsentinel9 at gmail.com if you uh, want to come on the show, talk about anything. If you're a whistleblower and you want to give us some information, that's always welcome. Thanks again for listening. Catch you later. Goodbye.